Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. And as always guys, Autodidactic means to be self-educated and you want to be self-educated because if you're not, you've really only got one option and that is to just believe what people tell you. And of course, we know that most of what we are told is just fabricated. And today I wanted to have a look at some underground levels. As you can see, what we're looking at here, this is completely underground. We have a door and some windows, and obviously they've hung their pipes for the building on top, and that's that's completely underground. Here's another shot of a, as you can see, you know, this is street level, and they are way down there. So what's happened here? What's this all about? All right, let's get into it. So here is an article, Valley Community Newspapers, and it's called Raising Sacramento Streets, Created City, City's Mysterious Underground. And as you can clearly see, we've got the street level here, and I mean, this doesn't even look like the original ground level. These look to keep going down into the ground. And it just says, uh, well, it says here the original street, the city's original street level can be seen in that photo. Raising the streets was far from a simple endeavor. The Board of Trustees of Sacramento City supported the raising of the streets and assumed the obligation to provide the necessary materials. In this case, thousands of yards of soil were to be deposited along the streets in front of buildings. Legara Massino wrote, property owners were responsible for readying the lengths of streets fronting on their property for receiving the fill. Dirt was to be deposited along the streets to depths of about 10 feet and such vast quantities of earth could not be left in heaps. The piles of soil would soon become piles of mud. Uh, to, to contain the dirt, each property owner arranged individually to have a brick bulkhead wall built at the edge of the street line in front of the, uh, their property. The bulkheads extended from the ground up to the established grade to which level dirt would later be piled in the street. Many of these brick bulkheads are still visible. In the task of the business owner could uh, seem arduous and expensive, but Lagamaricino <laughs> wrote in the autumn of 1866, a bulkhead was built to high grade for only $3 a running foot. So there you go. So this was all done in 1866. They regraded all the streets, they're telling us, and they brought in all the dirt to raise all the streets in Sacramento, 10 feet. Now it says here 250 jack screws were put into place under that job. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, he recounted the story of the St. George Hotel, which was raised in 1866. Just gonna do that. Um, 250 jack screws were put into place uh, under that job in early August. It was about two weeks before the work on the $7,000 contract was begun. It took two months. 160 feet by 76 feet was the size of the building, weighing 1,900 tons, and it was raised eight feet with very little damage with jack screws. So let's just have a look. Where are we? Sacramento. At this building that they raised and as a side note guys the word raised r-a-i-s-e-d means to lift up to raise r-a-i-z-e-d means to level to flatten okay so look it looks like this is no longer there this is it it's clearly a brick building it was four stories high that that's a clearly a brick building and they're telling us they raised that with jack screws. What was the foundation? What was it sitting on? Here's a little 
plaque. But yeah, clearly, this is what they're saying they've raised up. But brick buildings have footings of brick. They're big, heavy buildings. You can't, you know, what, what are they saying? That they just sort of got somehow got in underneath the walls between the foundations and it doesn't make sense at all, guys. But anyway, it's gone now and that's a massive brick building. They're saying that they lifted it up. Uh, you've probably seen this picture. So the same thing that happened in Seattle. They regraded all the all the roads and things. Um, I'm not sure how that ended up there. Uh, but you can hit down here. It says, To understand why the sidewalks in Pioneer Square are hollow, one has to go back to when the first white settlers came to the area in 1851. The topography of the region was completely different back then, and land, uh, the land that would one day become Seattle was once a tiny peninsula, which used to periodically flood into an island. It was a terrible place to build a city, but white settlers did it anyway. Uh, so here we have an old picture that looks like it's a hill, not a floodplain. But anyway, and basically uh, this, this is a very common story. Nevertheless, life continued as the city grew, that is, until the entire downtown area essentially burned to the ground during the Great Seattle Fire of 1889. So, it was... set first settlers started building there in 1851. By 1889, it was completely built out with brick buildings, and then it all burned to the ground. And then after then, uh, miraculously, no one died which is another theme. Uh, so the city saw this disaster as an opportunity to rebuild and to get their town above sea level. They decided to raise the streets over 10 feet above where the ground had been before. However, business owners in Pioneer Square were already rebuilding rather than halting their local economy while the streets were raised. Business owners were told to rebuild using brick and to add other entrances on their second floors. Okay, so these guys are still doing business and while the the roads are being lifted, you know, there's just been a fire. There's no buildings left, and that they, they've they've managed to rebuild multi-story buildings um, before these guys can, you know, regrade the streets. Here, this is a photo. You can see this is clearly just a massive hill. Comes down here, and then this is just all mud flooded. They, they've got a, a few bits of wood under here. Why are they trying to say that's holding up this house? Because seriously, uh, under here you can see though, there's other windows and a sub. You know, there's another level down there. And but this is what they're saying that 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 they um, raise the level to here. So these that's probably these shops, and they had lower levels, and then they. Yeah. But these again, you can't see the walls that they were supposed to have been building in front of all the houses. So that, what are they doing? Just filling them straight to the windows, straight to the walls. I mean, that, you know, that's not a good idea. Rising damp, all that kind of stuff. The streets were being raised up and around the buildings and the sidewalks. In some cases, people had to go up or down stairs and ladders to enter their shops and businesses. Okay, and there we have a few pictures. And this is what's left underground. Entire levels. And this is a picture of what they did. And this is, you know, they were saying you had your level down here and people going up and down ladders. Um, and then they came along and they filled this bit. This is the wall that people were supposed to build. And then they infilled it, put their pipe work in there. And of course, this is all, all done in the days of horse and buggy. Okay, you can see how much dirt that buggy could carry. <laughs> how many trips do you think it would have to make? To bring all this dirt in and I have no idea what this building is if you do know please let me know it looks like it's just sticking out of the ground on an angle very strange okay so it's as well so this is a bit more about Seattle and the remains that were left and these are the underground stories as you can see someone's just looks like that you know old school desk old shop someone's put their little coke thing down there but yeah, window, completely under the ground. This is all completely under the ground. 
this is the great fire and here this is the pavement the new walkway on top and it's just a great you can see these brick lintels this looks like a one of those arched brick uh, ceilings and this has still got its wood facade and everything on it all under the ground so look at that the entire level look at how thick the brickwork is too and all red brick okay so this is Chattanooga which is in Tennessee this is a photo we saw at the start the doors on the north side of the Loveman's building leading to a retaining wall so they're saying um, you know we're looking from the retaining wall and that that used to be on ground level uh, you'll find little, little evidence that the town's residents of yesterday conducted business in the first floors that are now below sidewalks and parking meters for that you have to go underground so Loveman's building 130 years old and below the, the basement of the building uh, is a cellar a lower store floor sorry made from cinder block brick and limestone it smells like a basement etc etc but it has doors and windows in it at some point in time possibly around 1875 to 1905 so they don't even know when this one happened in Chattatooga but this one they're saying you know the walls were there as well in front of these buildings that's why there's that gap so were they dug out? I'm not sure. Um, somewhere around 1875 to 1905, Chattanooga built up its roads and abandoned the first stories of its buildings in the downtown of the city, turning them into basements. Today, no one knows exactly why or how it happened. The popular theory is that Chattanooga raised its city a story to escape the devastating flooding that the Tennessee River wrought every few years. Evidence also points to an attempt to escape the disease of the day. Um, because they had no pipe work left because it was all covered in, in mud. Uh, da, 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 cities build themselves up. So, but yeah, they don't know how this, I mean, that, and that would have been a massive job. But again, they, you know, all these, these, uh, cities, they're saying that they just built them on floodplains. I mean, come on, really? And these are some of the older buildings and they're just saying it's all you know you can't see it it's just all underground but this is what you see and this has been bricked in got a lintel there and here top of at the bottom floor underground again so that one is chattanooga chicago fact or fiction chicago was raised four feet in the 1860s um, now, I'm not sure when this photo was supposed to be taken, but you can clearly see the tops of windows there. The Chicago, the city of Chicago is built on a, on a swamp. You know, why not? Let's build all these cities on floodplains and swamps. Because the city sprang up quickly, planners did not think through the potential for flooding, much less the inability to have proper sewer drainage systems if the building were all at sea level. Over the years, this created large standing pools of water throughout the city, which in 1854 led to an outbreak of cholera that killed 6% of the city's population. So what were they to do? The plan. In 1856, an engineer named Ellis S. Shesbro drafted a plan to install a citywide sewer system. After a heated debate, the plan was approved and contracts were taken out to lay the system on the existing roads and then build the roads up 4 to 14 feet higher depending on where they were in the city this they said would create an elevation change needed to make a functional sewer drainage system now this is in 1856 i'm not sure how big or old chicago was or when it was founded but i mean <laughs> i mean it's full of brick buildings this is a thing if it was just an actual settlement that was 50 years old it would have been full of wooden houses it would have been easy to just move but they, these are obviously they've found these cities and they've been flooded out or maybe they got into them and another flood happened we don't really know 
Um, so what people didn't really realize at the time is that the roads would need to be elevated that high, which meant either moving or raising the adjacent buildings to that level. In January 1858, the first masonry buildings were raised. It was a four-story, 70-foot-long brick structure. And how did they do it? Boston engineer James Brown, oh, James Brown, and James Hollingworth devised a plan to use 200 jack screws. Here's another photo. You can see that one's clearly below street level. They then raised the entire city block. Okay, so this is where it gets pretty good. By early 1960, oh, so let's jump forward, engineers had gained confidence that they could raise larger and heavier structures than in the previous two years. Hollingworth and Brown teamed, that must, that must mean eight, that must mean a mistake for 1860 because up here we had 1858. So yeah, two years. So eight, so it's by 1860, engineers had gained confidence that they could raise larger and heavier structures than in the previous two years. Hollingsworth and Brown teamed up with George Young Pullman and lifted an, an entire city block on Lake Street. The image above creates a view of the scene as the 320 foot long row of shops, hotels and offices was steadily raised four feet eight inches by a team of 600 men using 6,000 jack screws. The spectacle was said to have attracted thousands of people. So that's what this is, guys. They're saying that they've raised this entire block of brick. That They admit these are brick buildings, masonry. Look, I mean, you know, I can say that's one, two, three, four, five stories, but look at the size of this guy. <laughs> They're big stories. These are big buildings. And they've just raised them. I mean, again, how did they separate them from the foundations? You can't build these things on, on just on, on the ground in dirt. They would have to have proper, proper big foundations. I mean, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, okay, so they raised the entire city block. And still the most impressive feat was still to come. In 1861, the large Tremont House Hotel, which took up over an acre of space, was raised while the hotel remained fully functional. Indeed, many of the visitors and guests were completely unaware as the work was hidden under awnings and shades. They ended up raising the building a full six feet without a hitch. All of this sounds a bit too strange to believe, but in this case, history doesn't lie. Well, I think it does. Because that's ridiculous. I mean, this is obviously just a drawing, but as you can see, these they've all got their own little hand jack. You know, it's like a screw jack. You just screw it around, it goes up. And they just what? Just around the, the walls, the outside of the walls of this building. If <laughs> It's just, this is just a joke. You know, brick buildings have internal walls. If you just check out the outside, all the inside would just cave in. The whole building would just, it would just implode. Um, you would need these jacks spaced, you know, very close together, you know, like on <laughs> four every foot or so, every square foot for the whole, in, you know, the whole base, the whole acre. Is that how, that, how big they said it was? An acre? Um, <laughs> an acre. And yeah, that's just ridiculous. This is uh, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago as well. Now, this is a little wooden building. Yes, you could raise that. No worries. Agree. But this building next to it, you can see they haven't. No, that's brick. That's brick. You cannot raise that. This is the building. The Tremont House Hotel of Chicago. Now, I was looking, I've got a few different shots, I'm not really sure, but it looks like, it looks like this was it. And then they defaced it, maybe? I'm not sure if it's the same building or not. But we get this as well. So at the very least, it was this big brick building. One, two, three, four, five stories high, domes and everything, 
covering, you know, an acre, and they just lifted it up off the ground. This is an earlier shot from it. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's the same building or not. But but anyway, whatever, whichever building it was, it was huge and it was brick. So this is 1832 to 1905, but here it is. Gosh, this is another. Oh. Boston. Okay, so these are all over the place, these Tremont houses. I'm not sure what they are. Here's another one. But so we'll go with this. This is what they lifted. <laughs> massive, massive brick building. I mean, it's just a ridiculous story. Like I said, you can't separate. How would you separate it from its foundations? Even if you could, how would you then get jacks in that gap? You know, because seriously, we're talking brick on brick or brick on cement. So what are they? This ridiculous. It's just a ridiculous story. You couldn't get underneath it, it unless you, if you went down far enough to get under the actual foundations, you'd have to dig right down. You may be able to, you know, get jacks all the way underneath it. But you, I mean, how would you do that anyway? You would literally have to start tunneling and jacking it from one side and then sort of go through. And then once you'd done it and got off the ground, you then have to go in and backfill it, but not just backfill it because all, <laughs> All this, all this, um, you know, the land, the dirt that it's on has to be compacted. If it's not compacted, the building's just going to go sideways. So that's just a completely ridiculous story. And this is the kind of thing they do. I think they just throw out just stuff that's so ridiculous and they just see if we'll, if we'll buy it and if we'll believe it. And this, you know, this is what I said at the start, guys. If you're not autodidactic, you have to believe this stuff. And we've all met these people, we've all heard their arguments, and they just keep, you know, repeating a line from a book or from something that a school teacher told them because they cannot educate themselves. They can't get more information in. They have to stick with what they know. It's very strange. But this is, this is for idiots. This is treating us like we're stupid. It clearly is. I mean, and this picture, that's just a drawing, but that picture is just, ridiculous even if this was true and it was a wood building which it which is not and it wasn't again how do they get the jacks under the floor that would have had to be trenching everywhere that would have made the jacks had to be twice as long and again you would have had to go span right under the whole building or else it would just implode and collapse on itself so just 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 stupid should we see what the next photo is i mean that's just a and this is the problem. There's just so much crap. Audrey Hepburn. Um, yeah, it's just so many lies out there, guys. So educate yourself or, you know, don't, don't believe this crap. It, it's, that's ridiculous. Okay. I just quickly checked and it is, it's this one here. Tremont House 3. There was the, <laughs> this one burnt down, of course, in the Great Fire of Chicago. And they built another one and it fell over or something. I pushed it over and this one was, and this was built 1830. Like this, this was four years after it became a town. Um, the fourth and final Tremont house, blah, blah, blah. That's the wrong one. Tremont house was built in 1833. The same year Chicago became a town of four years before it was a city. They built this 1833. Um, then yeah, it burnt down and, this one was built in the 1850s. So this is the one they raised off the ground, six feet, with manual jacks, no machinery, nothing. Uh, California, Sacramento. Again, Sacramento once stood 10 feet lower than it does today, and as such was very prone to flooding. No wonder when, uh, no wonder when that in the mid 19th century, residents fought back and raised the old city to higher grounds all but one section which still holds out the original elevation and here we have it ground level underground his little sign it was raised in the 1860s after many incidents of serious flooding again they've just built on a floodplain in the 19th century the owners of two three and four story buildings in sacramento simply abandoned their ground floors and constructed raised sidewalks Level with the first floor. Over the years, the road. 
So they just left their, their bottom, you know, abandoned their bottom floors and just left them to rot and to be full of water and mud and ice. We were all, <laughs> over the years, roadways, roadways were also raised to just below the new side level, level, sidewalk level, effectively elevating the entire town. So this not even, again, it's not saying it was actually done on purpose or it was a community project. It just sort of said, oh, well, people just raise, <laughs> abandon their bottom levels. They raised sidewalks outside their doors. And then over time, dirt just blew in and filled, filled everything up apparently so again just I mean come on that's a ridiculous story and I just wanted to show this as well this is actually from Melbourne but this is what we see all over the world this is underground and we, we see this so often um, normally pubs clubs bars and they're underground See all the red brick, this looks like it's new work, but this looks like old work and it's completely underground. So you've probably been to one of these or seen one in your city, they're everywhere. And, you know, without the information of mud flood, you, you don't really question it. But with that information, you know, why are these all underground? And you can see, I mean, you can look at this, you know, someone might say oh, it was built as a basement, but look at the ceilings. You know, columns, you know, you don't build basements like that. That was a floor, so there you go. So, we've got some, yeah, uh, regraded cities in USA, you know, with, with clearly just sunken whole levels underground. Interesting stuff, and now they're starting to act, you can actually find this stuff, they're actually saying, and they're making up stories, not very good stories, um, but they're starting to admit that there are, there's things underneath our feet and and you know if if we can you know you saw some of those pictures and some of those stories said they were raising level 16 feet you know some of that under the white house it's like 20 30 feet down so what's under our feet what's really under our feet how much is down there you know, where did all this mud and dirt come from what happened many many questions all right, guys, hope you liked that one. Thanks for spending some time with me and uh, have an awesome day and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.